the work is um, a lot about grieving and mourning and um, what happens when you lose somebody and when when somebody dies what happens to that person so you know human beings are generally a specific form shape whatever when they live when they die what happens to that form they become formless how so I, I became interested in how how would you depict that formlessness right so like how would you depict like a spirit or an energy or whatever the whatever the person becomes you're trying to create form out of formlessness right from something that was a form at one point okay so continuing with the same ideas and you can see the the figures are mourning for this other kind of figure on the ground and they're all kind of in different stages of mourning or grief you know they're kind of um, dealing with it differently just as we all deal differently with with death or loss or other you know big um, things that arise in our lives. It's um, like a van vanitas. I don't know. The term is like a, like a memento mori. It's like a reminder of life and death. You know, there's kind of just like a regular guy who's kind of like an, a worker, or you know, he's I, he's like kind of like me, like an artist, whatever. He's got paint on his clothes. The guy next to him is like a businessman, maybe a little bit older. He's got Gucci shoes, you know, and and a suit and whatever. And you can move down the line and each figure has a different outfit which represents something different, different symbol of kind of life and death, right? But in the end, you can have all the gold, you can have the Gucci shoes, you can celebrate all the joy of life with all the grapes and the Bakian festivals and all that. But in the end, we'll all end up, you know, as, as this figure on the ground. So it's all level at the end. textiles isn't that kind of very narrow sort of what you can exhibit and stuff and, and I say no if you think about it 
Um, quilts and textiles have been made for like over 10,000 years, right? So by people everywhere in the world. So really it's a pretty big mission. So, um, so we try to do constellations of exhibitions like we have now that combine, you know, quilts and textile art from, again, different time periods, different cultures. And then I don't know if you saw Boy Code, um, the Boy Code embroideries that are in the uh, lobby area uh, by Wendy Osher. She, you know, was the mother of like some tween teenage boys, right? And she said she kept finding these crumpled up papers, you know, like notebook papers with these drawings of like these He-Man figures and weird things in the bottom of their backpacks. And she said, you know, as mom, she was just kind of, eee, what is this? And what's going through their heads? And they were going through puberty and like searching for their masculine identity. And, and she said, you know, she couldn't even deal with it because it was so upsetting to her to see this kind of imagery. And she said, once they moved out of the house and went to college, she started talking with other moms who had sons and she said they all kind of figured out that you know they all were finding these kind of things and not knowing how to deal with it and so she decided she was going to faithfully reproduce some of these drawings these doodles that her sons had done in embroidery so we're always looking for new new folks to exi exhibit you know we're always looking for for um, new artists to feature and so people should not be discouraged if they don't you know get an exhibit right away um, and so send us something that we can keep so that when we're doing our exhibition development, we can, you know, use it as a resource. British artist named Des Taylor. He is a uh, illustrator, commercial illustrator, who is best known for doing work for Theo Fennell in, uh, in London, who is uh, the jeweler to the stars, I guess. Uh, Des does a lot of pinup style stuff and a lot of pulpy style stuff, uh, crime-esque or whatever. The, uh, the art that's on the wall here uh, is from a book that we're publishing called The, uh, the Vesha Valentine Story which is about a fictional uh, Hollywood star who, as a young girl, uh, gets her start in the cabarets of Paris and works her way up in true Hollywood fashion to be uh, one of the biggest stars in the entertainment business um, in Hollywood. And it's all about her journey and the people that she meets and the lost loves and the love she finds in the end. And it's kind of romance, it's pulpy, it's very much like watching an old movie, uh, minus the, uh, the singing. Uh, obviously, uh, our place, besides being an art gallery, is a comic book store. And comics are a uniquely American art form. Tonight, we joined it together with jazz, which is another uniquely American art form. And we invited people to come down and jam or uh, draw people playing their instruments. And uh, it's something that we pull together. That would be a lot of fun to introduce comics people to jazz, introduce jazz people to comics. There's a lot of sort of crossover of, of audiences that sometimes people don't don't see.
uh, basic pottery. Right now I'm doing a opening and pulling, initial pull of the clay after centering. And we're just trying to make sure that everything stays centered. Everything begins with a cylinder. So if you can get a sewer pipe thrown, you're good. Because then anything you see on the shelves comes from a cylinder. The only thing we're missing is Demi Moore. From <laughs> Museums and a lot of times the established galleries that that, uh, that are kind of like museums, you know, they're they're looking for artists who are already famous, who already have a name out there, and that's really we're looking for the people who are maybe like down the road they're going to be like somebody who who you're going to understand as as like a person who's, who's to look at for art, but we're looking for those people at the beginning, you know, and so we're looking for those proposals that. Uh, that maybe are too soon for other places, really. So parts of the community that are underrepresented, things that are really unusual that maybe another museum or a gallery normally would have a hard time accepting. So things that are a little bit more on the edge and things that are really related to our own community. narrative that we've created together telling chronicling the adventures of these two twin sisters that live in very very different worlds but kind of come from the same place and um, you know we've been working on this project for for a little bit now and it's a kind of a continuing narrative that we're, we're putting together and it's been really exciting to work with Maida uh, she's a performance artist and so part of part of these characters are, are based on some of the the performances she's on, some of the kind of the characters she inhabits as an artist. And so part of the story here, part of the illustrations are to kind of capture capture those moments. Well they're characters but they're also very close to who I am. So it's very easy to kind of go from, you know, real life to 3D images. <laughs> um, but he's the mastermind of the whole 3D the whole 3D thing. Um, I'm just here to be a, a cute face. <laughs>